Welcome back to a new video here in Swabby. In this video, which is the first episode of the, the After Effects to DaVinci Resolve series, we're going to be exploring a couple of different things inspired by the first part of this video by School of Motion with Alex Deaton. Now, in this case, in After Effects, he's explaining about like his workflow with these different things, which in DaVinci Resolve, they're not exactly applicable the same way. But we are gonna build the same thing that he's building here in DaVinci Resolve so that you can understand the process and if you watch this video you can then relate it to different things uh, that we do in DaVinci Resolve. Now here in DaVinci Resolve the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new fusion composition and you can name these whatever you want. And once inside fusion the first thing we're gonna do is create a background node. And then what I'd like to do is I'm going to bring the alpha of these all the way down so we can see what we're working with. Now, if you want to add guides or show the lines here, you can press Ctrl G with the viewer selected so you have a better understanding or view of the layout. OK, now the first thing that he does in this case is he's going to create the shapes of this eye and then he converts it into a best year so that he has these different lines or points that he can then later edit. Now, if we try to do the same thing with an ellipse here, we're not going to be able to animate the way that we want it. So make sure to check out a previous video that I did, in which I cover how to do a perfect circle by using a polygon or, or the B spline here. And I'm going to show you the same again here, but just in case you want to recap, I have a video on that. Now with the polygon here, you can right click and the polygon one here and then polyline go to create and then create an ellipse. You can choose the size here that you want. And then we have our perfect circle pretty much here. Then we can select everything and move it with our arrow keys. So it's sort of aligned right in the middle. Now that we have these polygon here, which is going to be the base of our eye, we can add a background node to these as a mask. And then connecting this here, we're going to see it black. We want it to be white. So we're going to go to the background here and we're going to change the color. This is the basic stuff of how to change the background color. And we have our polygon pretty much ready. Now, one thing that you can do here again is copy these. And first of all, we're going to name our different nodes here just so that we are more organized and it's easier to find things later on. For, to do that, we're just going to press F2 and now we can name these I1. Um, now selecting both of these, we can control C and control V these, and we're going to create the pupil with these. So now that we have a merge node right here, we can actually adjust these pupil side to be smaller. Now, the first thing we need to do is we're going to change the color of these again to black or whatever color you want your pu the pupil to be. Now you can actually adjust the size of these uh, circle or spline by going here to size, and then we're going to make it smaller like that. So now we have pretty much the basics. Now, the next thing that you need to do is we're going to bring this eye here a little bit higher. And the reason for that is that we're going to connect this eye as a mask on the to this pupil. Now, here on the paint mode, we're going to have to change these for merge to multiply, which then that's going to add the effect that he has here, which is uh, for the pupil to disappear if it goes beyond any lines around these circles. Now we do the same thing here. You will notice that the effect is pretty much the same. So now we have that ready. We can double click here to bring it back into the middle. Now for the next part, he's gonna he's animating the eye going down. And when it does that, it actually takes disappears the pupil because it's beyond the border or the limits of inside the circle. Now, before we animate, what we want to do is we're going to right click here where it says right click for shape animation and we're going to remove the polygon polyline. Now that we have these free, we're going to have to create a new beginning point for our, for our animation here at 10. We can go four frames since blinking motions or blinking is pretty fast. It's going to be like that. So it's going to be really a few frames only. With these selected, you can hold shift and bring this down all the way like that or use your mouse if you want but holding shift is going to allow you to bring this directly down even if you have your if even if you're using your mouse and we also have to adjust the borders here so for that we're going to hold control so that we're only adjusting one of the curves here and we're going to try to align these 
all the way at the bottom to next to the other one. We're going to do the same thing here. Like that. So we have the, the eye coming down or closing in this case. After that, you can let this be there for a few two frames, let's say. And we're going to create a new keyframe. And then we're going to go to frame 20, which is four frames ahead. And now in order to bring these back to the points where we were before, the easiest way to do that is by actually going back to this first keyframe. And we're going to grab this spline here and we're going to copy these by holding control. And then we're going to put this right at frame 20. So now we have the blink in motion. If you want to make it a little bit smoother, you can select all of these and press F. So now it's like that. It's a little bit slow, but for the tutorial sake, it's fine. Now, the next thing that we need to do is we're going to create an instance, which this is a whole nother topic in itself. But in this case, I'm going to try to make it really simple so that you understand the basics of it. In order to do an instance of this eye mask, we're going to copy these by pressing Ctrl C and then we're going to use Ctrl Shift V. Now, that's going to create an instance that by default is going to connect to everything else. We don't want to do that, so we're going to hold Shift and bring it out. So the eye mask that we have here, it's connected still to the same things that it was before. And we're also going to create a new background here, which is going to be the border. So for that, we're going to press Ctrl C and Ctrl V again. And we're going to see these like that. Now we're seeing this whole thing like that because of this background node. We're going to connect this instance and it's going to create basically the same copy of these eyes. So if we make any changes on this one, the same change is going to happen on this one. And the reason for using this is because when we're adding keyframes here, it's going to be easier to do that than having to copy and create the keyframes for each of these different masks every time. Now, if we want to separate and add or change things without these affecting the other one, what we do is we de-instance that specific setting. Now, in this case, we're going to use, we're going to rename these. So it's going to be the border color for the eye. If we want to make this, if we want to see this bigger on screen, then that's like that. It's up to you. Okay. Now here in the eye border, what we're going to do is first, we're going to change the color. If we change this color right now, it's going to go all black because this is shown as being right on top of this. This is the foreground. Now here, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click here with the solid and we're going to de-instance this. So now when we make a change here, it's not going to affect the previous mask that we have. So now we can see the background again. The next thing that we need to do is we're going to de-instance the border width. And now we add a border, we're going to see these on our screen. Now, the way that Alex animates it in his video is that whenever the eye is closed, the border will show up. In order to do that, we're going to create a keyframe right here, one frame before the eye is completely closed. And we're going to create a keyframe for the border width. Then we're going to go one frame forward, which is when the eye is completely closed. And we're going to increase these by the desired amount that you want. Can create the next keyframe because we have two keyframes where it sort of like stops for a little bit and then as it starts opening again we're going to bring this back to zero if we go to the spline tool we can see everything here and we can select everything and press f so that everything is a little bit smooth like that if we unselect these so we don't see the viewer here we can see our eye there and it's really subtle and I really like how it looks like that. Okay, we have the blinking motion right now. Now the next step is to animate our pupil. In order to do that, we need to know where these keyframes are here. So it's gonna have the animation of the pupil can happen anytime between these two, and ideally it will be between these two in the middle, which is when the eye is completely closed. So in order to do that, we're gonna create a keyframe here at frame 14 and then at 15. For that, we're going to go to frame 14 here. We're going to create the keyframe. And then at 15, we can make the eye look to the side as much as you want. So now when it starts, it's going to be in the center. Once it opens, the eye is going to be looking to the side like that. Okay, now what if we want to create a perfect loop for these to continue to happen? Now, if we select these how they are and if we add a loop, this is not going to work because it will not have a pause in between and it will just constantly 
uh, blink. In order to fix this, I remember at the beginning I told you to get rid of that first keyframe at zero, but we actually need it back. So we're gonna put that keyframe at zero. And this one is connected, so it doesn't matter in which one of the both that you create the keyframe. But the, here for the border width, we need to use the eye border one. Now, if we select everything here, and now we add a loop, now it will be a perfect loop and there was not gonna be any like issues or weird things happening. Same thing we can do for the pupil. We can see here, uh, the pupil is at the middle. So we're gonna create a first key from here for a pupil um, at zero. And the reason why we're not creating a perfect loop for the pupil yet is because we wanna add another movement to it, right? We wanna make the pupil go from one side to the other one and then back to the center. And to create that perfect loop for that, we need to add the two different positions again. Now we're gonna go until the next loop is repeated, which is right here, and then right here, we're gonna create the keyframe of our pupil again moving. In this case, it's gonna be at 34 and then at 35, and we're gonna bring this to this other side. Now, when the pupil, when the eye opens again, the pupil is gonna be on that side, and then when when it goes back to the next blinking we are going to add a new one which is going to be a, a key from right here and then at 55 and we're going to bring this to 0.5 now if we look at it it's looking all the way to the center again now if we want to create a perfect loop for these we have to go we have to select everything and then here in the spline tool editor we're going to fit these all to screen and we can identify and see that we have a problem here. First, we're gonna lock this by adding the circle here. Now we can see the issue right here that we have is that we have a perfect loop and there's a pause, but the loop should be aligned with this other one. It should start right here at frame 60. And to fix that, what we're gonna do is with the pupil selected here, we're gonna create a keyframe here and it's not allowing us because we have to select these and uncheck the loop first. And then we're gonna create that keyframe. Now, if we select everything, we can create the loop and now it will perfectly align with everything else. And we don't have to worry about these if we wanna add more like, if we wanna make the timeline longer and the animation last longer, you can just leave it like that. Now, the next thing that Alex shares in his video is the basically a duplicate node, which is called repeater in After Effects. I think it's the same thing, basically. And we're going to add that here on this merge node. And we can actually move around or add a transform tool here. And to open the selection tool, we press Ctrl and Spacebar. And now we can actually adjust the position of our eye without making any weird changes, right? Here now that we have these ready, what we can do is we can add a duplicate node. And then with these duplicate, we can bring these to the side like that. And now we have two eyes like that. Now, if you want, you can add the color to the background here. And now you have that basic eye motion. Now, in this case, that's it for this part of this video, this part one of this video. I hope it was helpful and you were able to understand a few concepts. Now, in the next video, I'm going to divide these into two videos. Now, in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I added extra, which was that ghost animation. And Alex actually is not showing that. I don't really know where I got that idea from when I was playing around with it. But I'm going to show you how I created that sort of ghost animation of it going backwards. Now, if we want, if we go into the fusion composition of this eye here, you'll see this is basically what we have just created, except with a drop shadow. Like that, we can see our eyes here. And then I added a drop shadow. And then the next part would be the body of our ghost here which it's gonna be a different self animation because it's gonna have to make it a little bit bigger since it comes off screen. You'll see the pole lines here. But that is it for this video. I'm gonna make sure to check the next part 
in which I'm going to cover how I added this animation of the ghost coming from off screen or from the screen, basically a zoom out animation. And I hope this video is helpful and it helps you understand better of what you can do here in Fusion. And I hope to see you in the next video here in Swathen. Bye.